hello everybody and welcome back to Killer Hearts. My name is George and it's my delightful task once again to present to you a brand new product. This time it's one we've been very excited about. It's called Filter Table. It's a wavetable based filtering effect. And if you're not quite sure what that means, let me start by confusing you further by showing you a completely different plugin. Believe me, it'll come through. So this is Convolver and it's the first step I think to understanding what Filter Table is all about because Convolver, it is a kind of a filter in as much as it superimposes the characteristics of one sound onto another sound, a spectral filtering effect. In this case, I think it's the characteristics of a, a microphone uh, and I've just got it on some drums here. And the cool thing about Convolver is that it can represent all kinds of lengths of sounds and sizes and shapes of sounds. What it's particularly known for is big, long reverb tails. And that's very nifty, but what it's working with there is a, I think, yeah, nearly 10 second recording of a reverb tail in a nuclear reactor hall. And so if you wanted to stretch the impulse response, make it shorter and higher pitched to give a slightly different filtering effect with a lot more high frequency content. You can use this stretch function and it's all well and good, but as you see, it takes a moment to load to pre-compute that math. And so even when it comes to shorter impulse responses, you can't work with that stretching in real time. Because there's just the fractional pause while it thinks through that math. And this means you can't do cool filter sweeping effects using automation or modulators in Faceplant or whatever. It's just a limitation of what Convolver is. It's all about various lengths and sizes of sounds. But what if you could take a fixed length of sound recording, let's say 2048 samples, the length of a wavetable frame, and use that as an impulse response. Well, then the math could be kind of pre-stored and ready to go because it knows how long the sample is gonna be. And you could smoothly move through multiple different fixed length impulse responses without those artifacts. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, that's what filter table does. Believe it or not, it takes the frequency content of a particular wavetable frame and represents it as closely as possible according to certain rules as a filter shape. And that filter shape is then applied to the incoming audio and you can move it around and be crazy with it to your heart's content. Let's try it out first of all in Faceplant on a simple saw wave input. And as we move the cutoff knob, we're essentially doing what we were trying to do in Convolver. We're stretching that impulse response, but we're getting a smooth response. And what is more enormously cool even than that is that you can move through the frames of the wavetable nice and smoothly as well. So you can have all kinds of complex filters built into the life of a wavetable and just smoothly spool through them. Pretty exciting, huh? Let's set up a couple of modulators to do that for us in real time. And then we've got two dimensional morphing filtering going on and it's gonna get pretty exciting pretty quickly. And think that's just a simple sawtooth going in. Sounds like this. but we can sculpt all sorts of interesting things from it. And of course, let's not forget, we don't just have to send a simple sawtooth wave into the filter table. We could send another wave table in. I don't know, something fun might happen. It's certainly interesting. You can increase the emphasis on the highs and lows in the filter shape by using resonance here. It's essentially like a cue control. 
and then we have a mix control, which actually I think is a good time to talk about the phase modes. There are four different ways in which the filter shape can be computed. And the second one, linear phase mode, is designed to be the least disruptive to parallel processing and partial mix uses for this plugin. So that's like a linear phase EQ. It's introducing some latency in favor of keeping the phases aligned. And it's just great fun to spend all day cycling through different inputs, different filter table shapes. It's a real playground. Sorry, I was talking about the phase modes. So then there's original phase, which tries to keep as close as possible to the individual phases of all these partials in the wavetable frames. So each of them has their own phase value, which can be edited and played around with. So let's introduce that one nice and strongly so we can see as we edit it, it can have a real effect on the waveform and therefore the sound. And in calculating the filter shape in original phase mode, we try to stay as closely as possible to the phase relationships of those partials in the original wave. But as with minimum phase, that can give some phasing effects as we spool through with partial mix. And finally, there's raw phase, which just takes the raw values of the phases for any given frame. And it's the most authentic in a sense, but it also creates some artifacts. Which can be fun. Of course, it doesn't just have to be a, a face plant thing. It can be used as a standalone plugin, like all of our products, and applied just to audio. This is drums, and we'll hear them without for a moment. and then with. And something I love to do is put them in linear phase mode, bring the mix down to about halfway, and then you're gonna hear the original drums and a filtered, emphasized, reimagined version of them as we play with some of these controls. And of course, you can imagine the fun you can have automating and modulating some of these values to bring some extra life out of a particular audio part, even a voice, even, even a voice, voice, even a voice, guitars, drums, that kind of stuff. Got to sneeze. <coughs> Ooh, filter table that. Got to sneeze. <coughs> I just want to point out while I'm here the different folders in the factory library. You've got a bunch of comb filtering type stuff. Color filtering, which is based around particular scales and gives you kind of uh, tonal output. And of course that can be a lot of fun to like key track in phase plant using the note modulator. There's so many things you can do with these filters, it's unbelievable. You've got fun formant filter style things. Of course where this thing excels is in phase plant making crazy, squelchy, beefy, noisy, exciting basses. So let's just wrap it up with a little bit of that. Thank <laughs> you. 
If nothing else, it's just a crazy new way to introduce motion and excitement and vibrancy into your sounds. So why not check it out? If you're a Killer Hearts subscriber, you will already have it in your installer. And if you're new and you want to check it out, go to killerhearts.com, create an account and uh, enjoy. Thanks very much for being here with me and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.